I don't remember the sun being this hot in Pittsburgh, probably because I just never went outside. Hey, I'm Olivia. I was blind until 2016, and I have not been back to my hometown of Pittsburgh since before my eye surgery. So today I'm going to Kennywood, which was the favorite thing that I had about life as a child. And I'm gonna see Kennywood for the first time with my new eyes. Okay, so we're in Swiss Vale right now, and you take 376 to the Swiss Vale exit, and that's how you get to Kennywood. I kind of like it here because and I can say this as somebody that lived for the first half of my life in Pittsburgh. You can see the buildings, you know, things are, are geometric. They're, you know, the architecture is different than the big box architecture that's everywhere right now. And there's something that feels more robust, but I heard a journalist describe Pittsburgh as a city in a beautiful, perpetual state of partial ruin. As somebody who's lived here, I can say that that really is the that really is the jam. I never realized how different it was from the West Coast, from even New York City. Can you see that Kennywood is over there? So we're almost there. I'm so excited. For me, I feel like I can't mistake that I'm in any other place than Pennsylvania. I haven't seen any Kennywood signs yet. Usually there will be signs that are like yellow arrows on the side of the road that say Kennywood. And when I was really little and I would go here with my school, the teachers would point out the Kennywood arrows and all the kids, myself included, we would just erupt because it's like, oh my God. You know, those of you who are from Pittsburgh will know this, but for those of you who are not, Kennywood's open was, maybe still is, slang to tell somebody that their fly is open on their pants. I have no idea where that started or how. Um, maybe if somebody knows, you can put that in the comments for me. But if somebody from Pittsburgh tells you Kennywood is open, check your pants. So there's a big Kennywood sign, which happens to be, you know, the Kennywood actual sign, because it's literally right there. Kennywood police. I've gotten in past security, and I have to say the biggest difference for me so far is that they have a security line now. Yep. When I last came here, they had no metal detectors, they had no security, there was none of that. So it has a different feel coming in. The reason I really liked theme parks when I couldn't see was because everything is mostly the same. The map is the same. So I memorized how to walk around spaces, and I always did this at parks. So it was one of the places where I could kind of feel a little more normal. Even though I was memorizing the path and figuring it out from memory, it still was one of the places I could be free. So let's go inside. We're about to go through the tunnel leading into Kennywood, where it was a tradition for all of us to make weird sounds because of the echo. You'll see what I mean. Let's go. Okay, so now that we're through, I have a really cool story about this place behind me. This is the Candy Kaleidoscope. Back in the 90s, there was ski ball up here and I was playing ski ball with my friends and I skied a little too much ball and the ball came out of there and went down over to here. And I remember being like, oh my God, I'm gonna get in trouble and I ran away. General rule, don't miss your balls. Over here on this side used to be the turnpike. I greatly miss it, although I don't know as an adult if I would love it as much, because when you can't drive, something like that is cool. It now has the Skyrocket. I'm gonna ride that a little bit later. The highlight for me is the old mill. They had a Garfield overlay when I was here last. No shade to Garfield, because apparently everybody involved with that brand is a phenomenal human being. Really like the old mill of my childhood that was janky, skeletons. It really shaped who I am today and gave me my love of Halloween. Uh, in fact, that's what this park did for me. So this is huge. The old mill has now been restored to the original. 
I feel like we should ride that. Let's go. Something really cool. Before I'm going on the old mill, I was like, I need to pee. I literally walked right over and right in. From memory, remembered where the bathroom was. And after all these years, that just shows you how heavily I was memorizing things when I didn't have my sight. Oh, I can't wait to see this. I am on the boat. I guess I can take my sunglasses off now. Lika Show! Oh my god, okay, so these are all the old rides. I love Lika Show. Hello! Those are tombstones for all of the old rides. But don't get me started. They really need to bring back Lika Show, my favorite ride of all time. This dude is apparently robbing a bank with a skunk. It's, what's that? Can I ask? Oh, it's a video. Yes. She touched my camera. And I didn't appreciate somebody tapping her finger on the top of the lens of my $730 camera. It's all good. It's all good. So I really, I really enjoyed that one. I feel like it's definitely, it's definitely better than the Garfield's Nightmare because I don't think most people were really into that just because of the whole traditional nostalgic value of that. But. I do wish they had taken it a tiny bit further with the scenes on that. But yeah, definitely ride the old mill. <laughs> so this is the arcade where they used to have the little flip book machines where you put money in and it has like an animation from the early 1900s. I know they're not here anymore and I think it was because they had trouble maintaining them, but I do miss them. I do feel that was a big part. I think that might be some up there. It's not the easiest for me to find food at a theme park that I can eat, so I brought this in. They actually let you bring food in, which is good. I realize that probably seemed like a sponsored post. These guys don't sponsor me. I just don't eat when I travel very much for whatever reason I don't want to, and this is a way for me to chug and get the protein in, and it doesn't taste like butt, and I won't die. Now next is one of my favorite things in the world, and you're gonna hear me say that a lot at this park. So when I was a little kid, my freaking grandmother went on this ride. This ride is old, and it's awesome. This entrance is, I think, pretty new, or just new to me, and, you know, getting on the ride was pretty easy. I. I was really just taken aback with being able to see the tunnel before I went in it, rather than seeing it when I was going through it. I love, I love just, and I can totally see why when I didn't have sight that I loved this. I just love not knowing what to expect next. So I just rode the Jackrabbit. It is just as awesome as I remember it. It is at least 100 years old. They got it right the first time around. It hops. There's a lot of like bunny hill hops. And if you guys have not experienced a wooden coaster, I was raised on them. They are amazing. Absolutely amazing. So really happy to be able to do that again. I'm really grateful to be able to see it because you can kind of see the hops in front of you. But like, I think it, <laughs> I think it almost makes it worse. I don't know, it depends if the anticipation is bad or if just being surprised by it. But if you're, if I, when I couldn't see and I'd be surprised by it, I would just always assume something might happen. So I was like, Ugh! I'm a lot less tense riding rides now, I can tell you that much. We are going to go and check out the racer. The racer has always been one of my favorite rides when I was a kid because some of my, like my friends would be on the other car. There's just something cool about having two cars running and seeing who gets to the finish line first. So check this out. I always feel like I should be wearing like a dress and a parasol when I go on this ride. This is so cool. Anyhow, um, you can see how crazy it is. And a lot of people, they try to give high fives from car to car, obviously not when the ride is riding. I was able to notice the reactions of the other people in the car, which I would never have noticed before. This is just amazing. That was awesome. Yeah, the racer is just how I remember it. The only difference is that there's seat belts on everything now. In the 90s, nobody cared. What hasn't changed, there's a lot of Steelers t-shirts walking around, and I don't think that's ever gonna change. So next I'm gonna go to the ride that scared the crap out of me as a child, the Thunderbolts. By today's standards, it's not really that big of a deal. When you are tiny, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal.
kind of wonder how many people think about the sound that a roller coaster makes and how that plays into your experience because it was all of my experience. Now, this one really goes. It's, it still holds up. The thing about it is that there's now a divider in the center of the seat, so you don't squish each other as much because that's a feature of this ride, believe me. I just loved every second on this ride. Okay, I just drove the Thunderbolt. It is still wild. It is exactly like I remember it. And you can't ride alone, so shout out to Colleen from New York who rode with me. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't squish you too much right. because the person on the outside always gets squished and I was sitting on the inside. So what's next? Revenge. The Phantom's Revenge, actually. So we're gonna ride this one next. I used to ride the Steel Phantom back when I was little and that coaster was really rough. There was like a headset or a head thingy that w and it would hit your ears. And it was actually ripping people's earrings out and giving people whiplash. I was kind of glad when they took it down because it was a cool coaster, but it was way too rough. The Phantom's Revenge is a new version of it, which is way better. It's really probably one of the best rides in the park, if not the best ride in the park. The one thing to note is it is it takes advantage of a natural hill. It goes through the Thunderbolts. I don't think any other coaster does that. I'm excited to ride it again. I haven't been on this for a long time. And I really kind of decided after riding this that I'm probably not going to be on it for another long time. This was cool up to this point and when it goes through the Thunderbolt, but after this, it started throwing me around a little bit in a way that other coasters of its type don't do. I was like, what is happening to me? Uh, getting a little concerned. It is actually a lot rougher than I remember it, to be honest with you. I don't know if that's just me or just it's changed over time. But yeah, that's definitely one of the rougher coasters. I feel like if you're comparing it to something like Apollo's Chariot or other coasters of that type, it is a little harsher, but it's a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna go and look at what else I can get into. This is, in my opinion, one of my favorite things because there were things when I was little that I felt made Kennywood unique. And that was Lee Kesho, the dark ride, the gold rusher, and Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark is a walkthrough from, I don't know when, I'm not a historian, probably the early 1900s. I loved it as a kid. Again, because I couldn't see when I walked through these constrained paths, I'm able to feel and hear, and I had light, I, I had some light shape color perception. Look how cool this is. Back in the day, people would describe this to me as I would go in and you could hear the changes in the atmosphere so you would be able to follow along, or at least I could. This is a lot fancier than what I and my friends have experienced because I've talked to my friends who had eyes. Um, I love this part because it rocks left and right and there's some different things in there that shake me up a little bit, but not too much. So when you don't have sight, you can just grab onto the wall. Um, I love the elephant. I just love elephants, it's just me. But, you know, I just think it's amazing because you can't really see this ride anywhere else. Maybe there's one other. I love this floor. That's another example of something that when I didn't have sight, I would have very, very much enjoyed because it feels much more extreme, I think, when you can't see what that is and you have somebody with you describing it. Now this, um, this circle thing, I love this. Like, I, I could not do that before. That's weird. I, I don't know what happened there. I feel like there's supposed to be a finale room, but it wasn't in it. Listen, that was Noah's Ark. As you can see, that is where I got my never-ending love of haunted houses. Being able to walk through there as a kid, even though I didn't have sight, like I said, remember, I had light perception and I had some shape perception. What you can't see on the footage is that there was a lot of shaking on the floor, a lot of like angles like this, you know, bouncing, that kind of thing. That just, you know, again, it was a time when I could feel like other kids and I could enjoy it. It was just so amazing and magical to me, and it really still is. I do think there might have been something missing at the end there. I, I recall there was a finale uh, room when I went through this version of the ride way back when, but uh, I could be misremembering or maybe they changed it. So, um, yeah, when I went to see it, it was very 70s psychedelic and this version is a little more realistic. I just had a blast, and I honestly can say if they ever got rid of Noah's Ark, I would never come to this park again. What you also didn't see is that the tongue of the whale when you walk inside is actually squishy. I mean, imagine having no sight and being able to 
experience that. I can, I can see exactly why I loved it, and I still do. Now we have one more ride that I think I'm gonna try. This one is a relatively new one. So I remember it from college years. This is drug. <laughs> So I just got off the exterminator and that was so much fun. Like I had ridden it a while ago, but like I couldn't see what was going on in there. And now I can see how much theming is in there. It's crazy. I really feel that what separates a mediocre ride from a great one is the theming. Seriously, like spend money on that. I think more parks should. And I hope Pennywood goes more in that direction. If I were a kid, that would be the one that I would remember just because it has so much to see in there. The Exterminator is not an old ride. It's not exactly new either. I think it came out when I was in college, something, maybe after college. I remember going on it and having no idea what was happening. And now I can see all of the theming. One of my favorites because I always feel that Kennywood, the theming is what people look for here. At least it's what I look for. You know, I'm biased, that's my opinion. That one I could see, especially like, like kids wanting to go on that multiple times. So I just did Sky Coaster. I was going to skip it because I'm getting really tired and this is the end of my day, but I'm glad I didn't. This one is way better than it looks, so don't skip it. It's time to go and get ready to go back to Los Angeles. Thank you, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Kennywood. It's been so amazing to see my hometown that I've never seen before. It's changed my perspective. I have a feeling I'll be back sooner than the last time.